Welcome to Worship with Grangewood this Pentecost Sunday, when we celebrate when the Holy Spirit first came with power as promised by Jesus. He said, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me any more, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Let us pray. God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Gracious and holy God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. Your Spirit gives light, but we have preferred darkness. Your Spirit gives wisdom, but we have been foolish. Your Spirit gives power, but we have trusted in our own strength. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, forgive our sins and enable us by your Spirit to serve you in joyful obedience to the glory of your name. Amen. There is now no condemnation for those who live in union with Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Thanks be to God. Faithful God, you, pro you fulfilled the promise of Easter by sending your Holy Spirit and opening the way of eternal life to all the human race. Keep us in the unity of your spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The name of Pentecost derives from the 50th day the day after seven weeks of seven after Passover. It was a festival marking the end of the cereal harvest and Jews from right across the region would travel to Jerusalem to celebrate there. In the reading, we hear listed some of the places from which they came. We're reading from Acts chapter two. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly, there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious men who'd come from every country in the world. And when they heard this noise, a large crowd gathered. They were all excited because each one of them heard the believers speaking in his own language. In amazement and wonder, they exclaimed, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? 
but others made fun of the believers, saying, These people are drunk. Then Peter stood up with the other eleven apostles and in a loud voice began to speak to the crowd. And all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What do trees eat? How do they grow? We might say that they trap the energy of the sun with their leaves and that the energy of sunshine is locked into their wood. How can we release that hot and bright energy of the sun from the wood? It's as if the sunlight that is trapped inside the wood just needs prompting to remember how to shine. God's spirit is in us, but sometimes we forget and we need reminding. When we need when we meet God's spirit in the world through the goodness and the kindness of other people or through seeing the spirit shine 
in something like art or music, then the spirit in us can be set free. It too can shine and we can shine just as God intends us to do. Just as one match can easily set fire to another, just as one match can easily set fire to another, so the spirit in one person can wake up the spirit in another. If we follow Jesus' law of love, we will live our lives in the power of the Spirit. And the loving things that we do will trigger love in other people. One example of this is the response of gratitude and even fundraising for charity that was triggered by the self-giving love of health workers this past year. You'll know of other examples in your life. The spirit lives to set us free. The reading is from Romans chapter 8 verses 19 to 27. All of creation waits with eager longing for God to reveal his sons. For creation was condemned to lose its purpose, not of its own will but because God willed it to be so. 
Yet there was the hope that creation itself would one day be set free from its slavery to decay and would share the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that up to the present time, all of creation groans with pain, like the pain of childbirth. But it is not just creation alone which groans. We who have the Spirit as the first of God's gifts also groan within ourselves as we wait for God to make us his sons and set our whole being free. For it was by hope that we were saved. But if we see what we hope for, then it is not really hope. For who hopes for something he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit also comes to help us, weak as we are. For we do not know how we ought to pray. The Spirit himself pleads with God for us in groans that words cannot express. And God, who sees into our hearts, knows what the thought of the Spirit is. Because the Spirit pleads with God on behalf of his people and in accordance with his will. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit that Jesus promised came and filled the first disciples, they saw what looked like tongues of fire settling on each of them. And the first spiritual gift that they received was the gift of speaking in other tongues, in other languages that they hadn't learned. It seems that the expression of prayer in the native tongue of all nations is extremely important to God. We just heard Paul's words describing the whole of creation groaning as it waits in eager expectation of being liberated from its bondage to decay. And as part of that creation, the people of God also groan inwardly, while we wait also to be fully conformed to be like Jesus. These groans are described as wordless. Creation and people without the words to express prayer as they wait to be brought to perfection by God. We aren't perfect yet, and the earth isn't perfect yet, but with the actions of Jesus at the first Easter, the process has begun. And to help us in our being perfected, Jesus didn't leave us alone, but sent his Holy Spirit. Paul tells the Romans and us that when we don't know what to pray for, then the Spirit prays through us. This can be that we are given the words, or it can be the gift that we know of as speaking or praying in tongues. I don't know what your experience of the gift of tongues is, but I know an example of wordless groaning being turned to prayer by this gift. When my sister was a student nurse, one day early in her training on the wards, she'd been so overwhelmed by the suffering that she had seen that in her room that night she wanted to pray but just didn't have the words. She found herself speaking words in a language that she hadn't learnt. Through the gift of tongues she was able to pray, to her amazement and joy. Jesus told us that he would send his Holy Spirit when he went away to all who believe in him. He said the Spirit would glorify him as he makes known to us what Jesus received from God. What did Jesus receive from God? It was God's wisdom and power, God's peace and the knowledge that God is Father and more. So then, knowing that God is Father and the source of the Holy Spirit, we will glorify Jesus when we receive the Spirit and use the gifts that he gives to become more and more like Jesus. And the expression of love for God and all the people in prayer is so important that we eagerly desire to receive the gift of the words to pray either in our own language or even the gift of tongues if we need it, in order to pray for others and in praise of God. We wait to be conformed to the likeness of Jesus, not by sitting back doing nothing, 
but by putting ourselves wholeheartedly in the service of our Lord. Eager to become his children and receiving the help of his spirit in the joyful anticipation of being brought with all creation to the perfection intended from the beginning of time. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us.
The spirit of truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen. We go into the world in the power of the spirit to fulfill our high calling as friends of Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen.